Um, another concept that's quite close to it and that's definitely related, that's also very important for me, it's the concept of forecast stability. Now, if I go back to this slide, you see that the first step in my process here is the forecasting model. Again, that could be for you a specific software you just implemented or that you could just be some Excel file, but still you start the process with this forecasting model. And in my example here, you got this error of 45. Now the question, and I think it's very important, is how do we know, how do you know if 45% is good enough or it's just not enough? Um, here's an example. On the right side, you see a forecast I made a few years ago for a client. And you can see here the demand pattern in my own forecast. And usually the question I ask during my training course to profession is, can you assess the quality of this specific forecast? Okay. So people look at this and some are just saying, well, volatility is quite high, volatility is low, or your forecast seems to react to demand, so it seems good to me. But it's kind of very difficult if you imagine that you have 100,000 products to review to do this kind of analysis, skew by skew, model by model, to assess if it's a good or a bad uh, forecast. Instead, what I propose to do, which is actually very easy to do, is to compare this forecast to a benchmark. So I, the idea here is that we track the forecast error of the model and we track the forecast error of a simple moving average. You can see that on the slide, MA6, stands for moving average six months. So this model is just taking the average of the last six months and using this as a forecast. Now what we see on this very specific example is that the model I created does not add much value. If you compare the error of my model and a moving average, it's really unclear if this model adds any kind of value. Now, how can we use this with the forecast value added framework? Let me show you this in a second and then I'll go back to this slide. What you can do as well here is to add a benchmark to the framework. So basically, instead of starting by a forecasting model with this 45%, you would start by a benchmark like a moving average six months for 12 months. And by doing so, you can confirm that your software is adding value. And this is very important because I realize over time with all the companies I'm talking to that a lot of companies, a lot of software do not add any value compared to a benchmark. And this is, I think, a very difficult realization, but it's important to realize that some software do not add any value. Okay, so for me, forecast value added is not just about uh, assessing the added value of your team, of people reviewing the forecast, but it's also about assessing the quality of the forecasting model um, itself. Another thing that's very important here to understand, especially for those of you who are uh, managers or SNOP leaders or directors in supply chain, um, I think as someone who's managing your team, you want to give target to your team. You want to give objectives. I've seen many supply chain giving objective in terms of absolute accuracy. So it would look like, well, next year we want to reach an accuracy of 60% or 80%. Okay. And everyone should try to reach 80%. But as we can see here, for some, um, for some countries, for some markets, for some specific channels, it might be very difficult to reach that because these people start from a very low accuracy. So even though they will add value, they might never reach this kind of uh, absolute 80%. Instead, what I advise you on doing is to set added value target. So for example, you would say to your planning team, well, instead of as an objective having to reach 80% accuracy, you would say, well, everyone should try to add 5% of accuracy compared to the baseline model. Okay, so this reinforces the idea that for some team reaching 45% accuracy might be good enough, whereas for some other teams, they might need to reach 65% because they work in a very uh, stable environment. Okay, um, I think I had something else to say on this slide, so I'm just back one slide. The great thing about forecast stability and comparing your model to a benchmark is that as soon as you do that, it gets kind of easy to assess how much accuracy you could aim for. What I've seen project after project is that for most cases, well, not 100% of the cases, but let's say 95% of supply chain, you can easily make models that beat benchmarks by 10, 20, or even 30%. So as soon as you start running a moving average on your data set and you realize the accuracy you can get using that, it's very easy for you to assess, well, how good could I possibly get for this specific type of market or channel? Because you just look at the error of your moving average and you can assume that you can reduce that by 10, 20 or even 30%. 
Um, again, one key message here is that comparing your software to a moving average might give you a lot of uh, insights about the quality of the software you are using right now. You might be surprised. I've been discussing with a lot of supply chain who got totally amazed by the result, or I would say the lack of results the software would get uh, compared to this moving average.